Welcome back. Now we bring you Israel and the Middle East, a segment of Shalom Jerusalem, sponsored by the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. Here's your host, Esther Allen. Hello and welcome to Shalom Jerusalem. I'm Esther Allen. As you might know, this program is co-sponsored between the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem and Chosen People Ministries. Chosen People Ministry is a ministry that reaches out to the Jewish people. But on this week's episode, we are going to talk about God and his relationship with Arabs. I am so excited to have my two guests here today, Dr. Brian Fisher, who is the pastor at Grace Bible Church in College Station, Texas. Pastor Brian is a scholar in many areas. He's also a good friend who's helped start the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. And he has a demon from Dallas Theological Seminary. Thank you, Brian, for being with us today. Glad to be here. My next guest is Timothy Atik. He likes going by TA, which I love. You can tell how personable he is already. And he is the executive director at Breakaway Ministries in College Station, Texas. So we have two Aggies on the show here today, um, and actually one behind the camera, my husband. Um, but TA serves one of the largest college ministries in the country. We're so grateful for him, and he is also a Dallas Seminary graduate. So thank you both for being with me today. You bet. Thanks for having me. Tia, I would love to begin the show with you and just get to know you a little bit. Tell me about your, your family background, if you don't mind, and tell us a little bit about you. Yep. So my wife, my kids, we live in College Station now, work at Texas A&M. And uh, my family, I am part, I'm half Palestinian and then I'm half pure Texas. So my mom is redhead, fair skin, blue eyes. Uh, I like more like my dad than uh, my mom, but my dad grew up in uh, in Palestine. He grew up in Nazareth, uh, and um, so we have a lot of family that is still over uh, in Israel. We have uh, the bulk of our family lives in Nazareth, and an aunt that lives in Haifa. But um, so my my dad comes from a family of Christian Palestinians. So my granddad was a lay pastor. A lay minister would preach each Sunday. And so I love my heritage. I love the fact that that I come from a line of Christian, Christian Palestinians. T.A., thank you for sharing that. And what do we need to know about Arab Christians? Tell us about what we need to know. Well, that's a, that's a great and a tough question to answer besides, uh, you know, I think the the hard thing, at least living in the West, is that the, at least in my experience, the conservative evangel evangelical church, which I'm a part of, I went to a, a conservative evangelical seminary, at Dallas Seminary. I love my time at Dallas Seminary. But I think often people don't have a framework or a grid for a Christian Palestinian. And, and so I think that people don't know what to think of Palestinians, they automatically think that they're Muslims or they automatically think that that they're terrorists, just to be honest with you. Um, and so I think it's what I want people to know is that God's at work amidst the Palestinian people. And I love going over to Israel and interacting with people who love the Lord, who love his word and uh and love for people to come to know my, my cousin works with cef which is a children's even evangelism fellowship and so he's seeking to reach kids with the gospel in in israel which i just love and so i want people to know that i believe that god has a heart for the palestinian people as well and and that they need the gospel just as much as as much as anyone else Amen. We all do. And I thank you for giving us that insight. Um, Pastor Brian, you were one of the founders of the Alliance for the Peace of Jerusalem. I want to thank you for the work that you put into these statements that are really the framework of what we believe. I would like to read one of those statements to our audience and then have you comment on it. Um, it says that we affirm that God loves Jews, Arabs, those who live in the Middle East, and all humanity, and that he sent his son, Jesus the Messiah, to redeem and reconcile them to himself and to one another. Could you comment on this for us? Yes, yeah, certainly. I, I 
think that for a lot of Christians, they don't understand the Old Testament roots of the gospel. They don't understand specifically the, the covenant roots of the gospel. And if you go back to Genesis chapter 12, which is what Paul exposits in the book of Galatians, Abraham was promised that he would be blessed, but also that he would be a blessing to all nations. And so God's heart has always been for all nations, that he would send a, a Messiah redeemer through the Jews for all peoples and all nations. I was thinking about this interview earlier today, and as my mind took me to Jesus's genealogy. You know, there are four women in Jesus's genealogy in the book of Matthew, two of whom are not Jewish. One's a Canaanite and one's a Moabite. Right there in the, the genetic makeup of Jesus himself, he's, he's not purely Jewish. He's, he's got other nationalities uh, in his blood, which I think is a, just a beautiful representation of, of God's heart for all nations. I, I move myself mentally from the book of Genesis all the way to the book of Revelation. I go from cover to cover. And in Revelation, what you see is men and women from every tribe and tongue and people and nation bowing before the throne. That's, that's the end. That's what we're we're moving toward and we live for. So today, what do we work toward? We, we work toward men and women being reconciled to Christ and being reconciled to Christ, then they can be reconciled to one another. And that's really the, the essence of that statement. And Pastor Brian, let me expand a little bit more on that. How would you advise maybe um, an Arab or a Jewish believer to approach the Israeli-Palestinian conflict? Because it can be um, a heated conversation. So how, what is our posture to be? How do we um, approach these conversations with uh, keeping all people groups in mind and showing uh, dignity and respect to all people in the conversation? Yeah, I think that we, we start with what we share in common, and that is Jesus Christ. And, you know, you see parallels in the conflicts of, of people throughout uh, the nations, the, you know, African tribes and uh, Hutus and Tutsis that, are, that have battled one another in Africa or African-Americans and white evangelicals in the U.S. And, and what is it that brings us together? We have to focus on what we share in common, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we have to say that that's that's the transcendent and ultimate uh, reality that binds us together. And, and if we as believers can't find a unity in Christ, how can we model anything to the world? So I, I start with the conversation, what's most important to you? What do you value most? Do you value Jesus most? Then let's start with what we share in common. Mm, that's a good tip for many conversations, especially as we head into this election cycle. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think you know, I, I, I enjoy controversial conversations. I enjoy the ones that are tense because, you know, if, if we start with what we share in common and then we listen and learn from the other person's perspective, we all often have a shared goal. We just have different strategies for how we want to reach that. And, and if as believers, we can learn to have that really constructive but challenging dialogue. It's a beautiful model for the world. T.A., I want to throw this back to you and just ask for a little history. You mentioned that your family is from Israel, that you still have family living in Israel. What is your family's connection to the land? It seems like there's a, a rich history there. Well, so my, my family, um, when, when I talk about being Palestinian, I, I say that just because my dad was born in Palestine, which was the land prior to 1948. And so... Uh, Pre-48, my dad and his family lived in uh, Beichan. And then uh, in 48, my, my dad's family was removed from Beichan and then they were, they were relocated. I think Christians were moved to, to Nazareth and then Muslims were moved to Jordan. And so when I say that I'm Palestinian, I say that because uh, that's where my dad was technically born, was in the territory of, of Palestine. And so now in the land, you have, you have this interesting mixture where you have, you have Palestinians who still have that strong attachment to that, that was where they were born, that was their, their homeland. And, and you have people like my family who in some ways technically still have, feel like they own land that they can't access anymore. But then you have a new generation of people growing up that are not as much attached to that identity of pre-48, but they are coming into this, this time of trying to figure out, okay, what, is it, what does it mean to be an Arab, but also have this, 
attachment to, or they're looking at their parents who have these really strong emotions. And then you have, uh, I, I'm trying to, there's so much to say, but you have this young generation of, of, of Jews, Israelis, Arabs, Palestinians, and some are growing up with the, the, the emotions of their parents. They're growing up with these strong emotions that, that uh, can, feel, can be filled with uh, anger and frustration and even hate. And then you have a new generation of people who, who they want a new path. They want a new path forward. And I think you have Christians, this sliver in the middle of Christians who are trying to navigate between what is going on with uh, the identity of nations and, and what, what does it mean with the land, but then you have the value of knowing Jesus Christ. And the most important thing is the salvation of both Jews and Palestinians. I don't know if I answered your question there, Esther. It, I, I could trace this down a million different trails. I did answer it, and I hope that we can have you all back for another episode because we're just really scratching the surface. There's a lot to talk about. There's a lot to learn about the land, and it's important that you have a family connection there, and we need to learn from people that are living there in the land. Um, Brian, I just want to close uh, with asking you this. As somebody who wrote this statement who cares deeply for Arabs, who cares for all people, really, and you want all people to know Jesus, um, how do you reconcile that with uh, the bi biblical right for Israel to have land? Um, how do you deal with these biblical themes of both reconciliation and land promises that might be given to Israel? I do think that the land promises are, are eternal, but I also think or everlasting, but I think that uh, when Messiah comes back and he reestablishes his kingdom on earth, uh, he, he will bring uh, justice and righteousness and all of his decisions will be just and right. And what he does uh, with the land in regard to the promises and what he does with the land in regard to families like TAs who have a historical connection to the land, but are not ethnically Jewish, he'll know how to, he'll know how to reconcile all those, all of those things. And you see, uh, even in the Old Testament, that um, non-Jewish people who were living peaceably on the land and who, who wanted to worship the Lord were, were welcomed into that space. And so, you know, I, I, I ultimately don't know the details of how Messiah will, will work all of that out, but I trust him to do it justly and I trust him to do it rightly. And, you know, I think for a lot of um, uh, American Christians who are very sensitive to those promises made to Israel, they also need to, uh, they need to to build some relationships with Palestinians and understand their perspective on this and their own historical connection to the land. And, you know, understand that, that also there may be some limits to our understanding about uh, how the, the, the biblical framework will actually work itself out with God being consistent to his promises, faithful to his promises, and faithful and righteous and just to uh, all peoples who choose to follow him and worship him. Well, thank you both for coming on Shalom Jerusalem. We hope to have you back and talk a little bit more about what this reconciliation will look like and could look like even here on earth. But hey, one thing we do agree on is that Jesus is Lord and there is one way to heaven and that is through Jesus Christ. So I agree. Let's start with our similarities and build off of that. Thank you both for being with me today.